to find out who's going to be there we do in need the to third find round. Out. And we need to dive into our player profile. Of course, it's a series we're doing every single day leading up to the draft. Mm-hmm. So you guys can be prepared for who the Broncos could land, who's going to be there at 67, 68. Maybe the Broncos trade up a little bit. Maybe yep. they trade back. Maybe one of these guys goes in the fourth, fifth round. And let's focus today on a big boy. He's a very big boy. Jalen Dunkel, Duncan. Dunkel, I, I like that. Dunkel. A little beer. Jalen Duncan, uh, the tackle from Maryland. You can see right there, 6'6", 306. That graph is bringing heat. Yeah. With I mean, the Maryland helmet, too? Yeah. I mean, that's that's a good-looking helmet. Yeah. You just look at this guy, and you're like, oh, yeah, of course. That's an NFL tackle. Yep. Like, it's it's just that obvious. Yep. Um, He was listed at 330 last year. Whoa. Came in at the combine at 306. Okay. I don't think he I don't I don't think he actually lost any weight. I think that they always just lie on those things. Yep, yep, um yep. so that was lie on the college one. Exactly. So you think he ex- yep. actually is 306. Yep. Yeah. I mean that was combine 66 306. We can trust that. Yep. Which means you get to list him at 67 320 or whatever you want. <laughs> yep, um, yep. But because that weight was a little bit low, it does take away from just like the freakishness of it but again like okay. we've seen him play you see him in the uniform you're just like holy hell yeah and and he's a good player too yeah um not necessarily a great player yeah there still are some things that you want to work out i mean i'm pretty sure there's only one power five tackle in the country that gave up more sacks last year Oof. yeah the the pressure rate was like 126 out of 150 or so Oof. so there's a lot of that sort of stuff that you look at and say hmm not not ideal, but it's all just a lack of polish and a lack of experience. And that's why you, if you're a team like the Broncos, you could be interested because you have your two tackles. Yep. And this is somebody who could come in on the bench. And next year, you might be saying, hey, we can move on from Garrett Bowles because, look, Jalen Duncan lived up to the hype. You almost said Dunkel again. I did. You got beer on your mind, Henry. You got to go to Germany to get some Dunkels. Mm-hmm. Um, so, Henry, we're talking about him as like a third round pick, right? Yep. So I love the idea of this pick, mm-hmm. and uh, he's not a guy. If the Broncos get him or any other tackle with their first pick or with one of their first or with one of their third round yep. picks, he's not going to play this year. Nope. I hope he doesn't play because that means Garrett Bowles was really bad. Got injured. Means yep. Mike McGlinchey. I'm touching wood. Got injured. Uh, so you hope that that they don't see the field. And you're saying, well, no, that's one of your first picks mm-hmm. in the draft. You wanted to see the field at this important of a position at tackle. One, the Broncos need to draft a tackle at some point in this draft to yep. just have ex- depth, uh, a prospect. But to get your tackle of the future to replace Garrett Bowles next year, because Mike McGlinchey is going to be here for a while to replace Garrett Bowles. I love this. You, you mm-hmm. using this pick on a guy like Jalen Dunkel Duncan. Wow, you got me <laughs> on Jalen Duncan, who uh, the reason he falls is because he's raw. He's unpolished. Mm-hmm. And when talking about Jalen, he didn't start playing football until he was 14 years old. So when mm-hmm. you say unpolished, it's not necessarily a bad thing. It means he's still very new to football. He's still learning yep. the tackle position. So. I would love this pick, even for a guy that should have zero contribution to the team yet this year. But when it comes to Jalen specifically, I'm a little concerned because um, doing research into him, because Dre brought his name up last week, so I did some research into him. It seems like maybe that unpolished is still learning the game, mixed with some laziness, and that scares me because that's yeah. not something that, that you can coach out as easy. And it seems like he has all of the tools, not just the 6'6", 306, but uh, he has all of the physical tools that you want, good feet. But at times he just gets lazy or gives up on plays, and mm-hmm. it's really obvious when you watch on tape, and that scares me. So I love the idea of mm-hmm. this pick. I just don't know if he's that guy. Yeah, I mean, that's obviously fair. Um, if you're drafting him, it's because of the traits. You know, he's 22 years old, has a 9.43 RAS score. Ooh. Like, there's there's all that stuff that you look at and say, like, this is a really big human who can move, and he's still probably putting on even more strength. And, like you said, new to the game, needs to figure out how exactly to play the left tackle position. But, I mean, there's a good chance that's just coaching. Like, there's a good chance that if he had gone to Could Alabama, yep. 
you're looking at him and saying, oh my God, this guy is insane. And that's why he fits into the third round. Yep. Like that is a little yep. bit early to be taking a project. But, you know, if 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 you got this production from somebody else and he was like kind of an average athlete, you might be saying, yeah, he's like a fringe draft pick. But right. if you got these traits onto somebody who was producing, then you're saying like, could he be competing for a top five, 10 or pick top 10 pick? So, yeah, I mean, I, I kind of agree. Uh, there's in such a tough position with five draft picks. Like yeah. you, you get to pick what you need and to pick somebody who won't contribute this year, doesn't have a chance to contribute this year for a five win team. That's tough to do, especially, you know, looking through all the top 30 visits, the guys that they've brought in, a lot of those guys are really old. You know, there there aren't a lot of young players that, that the Broncos have brought in. I think they've had 11 top 30 visits. Most of those guys, 23, 24, 25, because of that extra COVID year. Yeah. And who knows how much to read into that. But it does seem like they have a bit of a type. And Jalen Duncan, at least compared to that stuff, might not be the type. Yeah, it, it's, it's very true. It's a good point. And Jose says a day two pick should see the field as a starter or prime sub no third mm-hmm. round projects for me except for premium positions in my yeah. mind if they were to somehow land hendon hooker or uh, a quarterback that they love in the third round mm-hmm. i hope he doesn't see the field this year because that means things went totally wrong with the yeah. quarterback position the other positions that fit that offensive tackle jalen duncan fitting right in there for me i'm okay if the broncos get a future starter Mm -hmm. if if it's at one of these positions where they have depth that's a position uh of importance too so offensive tackle edge could be one of those Mm -hmm. as well little bad taste in your mouth after last year with the broncos doing that with nick benito and still being really concerned about him this year Uh, and cornerback as well if you're getting like a project at center I don't like that at all. I mean, yeah. a, a center that you draft in the third round should mm-hmm. be coming in and yep. at least competing and really pushing Lloyd to be that starter. It should not be a project there. Same at running back. If you get mm-hmm. a running back in the third, he should not be a project. So, Jose, I'm there with you outside of the fact that this is a very valuable position. If you think you can get a starting left tackle in the third round, the only downside is he needs a year to develop. Well, it's a good situation to come into. Also, the Broncos just don't have a swing backup uh, yeah. tackle right now. Yep. And so you, you'd expect to get him a couple games of reps. And would you rather have him or Cam Fleming? Fleming would be better. For for this year? But is it Fleming, worth developing? But for the future, or, yeah. it, probably not Fleming. Exactly. So I, I see the case. Um, and it's also worth noting that, you know, you had... Oh, sh- that's the wrong guy. Uh, Abe Lucas was a third round pick, though. Okay. Last yeah. year, and he wound up playing 17 games for yeah. the Seahawks. And what PFF has him as the number 49 tackle last year out of my computer slowed down because too many tabs. 49, so not great, but he, wait, he was oh, 69. Yeah, 69. Yeah, 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 yeah. There we yeah. go. Oh wait, and that that was wrong. It's actually I have 100 plus. There's two pages of 100. <laughs> uh, uh, so uh, uh, something like that. And you also had Nick <laughs> Pet- Petit Frere. Petit Frere whose name I haven't said in like a year. But uh, he played, I think, quite a bit for the Titans as well. And he was, I mean, very similar to Jalen Duncan. He was like a five-star recruit coming out. Um, Didn't necessarily play all that great, super raw, but got to play a lot. And the traits played up. And uh, that's looking like a great draft pick right now. Yeah, yeah. So, Henry, to, to put a wrap on this, put a bow on this for today, would you be a fan of the Broncos drafting Jalen Duncan in the third round this year? <sighs> so I, you got to start with, I think one of those picks needs to be a center. You okay. just got to do it. And if Lloyd beats him out, Lloyd boot beats him out. But that's, that's the one spot on the roster where you need a starter. Outside of that, I think you could go a lot of different ways. I don't think I would go tackle. Mm. But if they did it, I would say, hey, this is a guy who's been in the first round in mock drafts. Maybe not Ooh. all that much recently, but like that's that's a very talented prospect. I see what you're doing here. I, I think I would like it. I would like it. I couldn't be more opposite of you. Not just saying that <laughs> I, I wouldn't hate it, but mm-hmm. I wouldn't be the biggest fan right away just because of the the 
I don't necessarily want to say lazy. That's just the perfect word that comes to mind because he has all of the yeah. traits. It just seems like, and uh, reading people that have really do- dove into him and then also watching the film, it just seems like what gets him is just uh, mm-hmm. not being able to, fin- not wanting to finish plays. Just yeah. being a little slow with his feet, uh, grabby at times, letting guys get around the edge of him. And I don't think those are physical limitations. I think it's just him not mm-hmm. fully finishing plays. So that scares me. But what's complete opposite of you too is I would love that position being drafted with one of the third round picks again Mm -hmm. to get a starter at a premium position and the only downside is he doesn't play for a year i'm okay with that in the Mm -hmm. third round 